In alhamdulillah, our praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'hdi wa nasta'gfiru. We praise him, we thank him, and we beg his guidance and his forgiveness. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. And we seek refuge with him from the evil of our own souls, our egos, and from the evil consequences of our actions. Man yahdihillahu fala mudillala. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there are none who can misguide him. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to lead astray, there are none who can guide him. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And I testify in front of everyone that there is no God who is truly worthy of worship except Allah alone and without partners. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ and I further testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his slave and his final messenger. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu taqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimoon. O you who believe, fear your Lord and have consciousness of him. Have consciousness of him and fear him, <clears throat> the fear that he is deserving of you. And do not dare die except as Muslims. Ya ayyuha nas Oh, humanity, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, our father Adam. And from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his mate, or our mother Eve. And from them both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala populated the earth with many men and women. And fear your Lord through whom you ask your mutual rights. And always uphold the ties of family. Always uphold the ties of kinship. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqeeba. Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever a raqeeb. He's always watching over you and I. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe. O you who have attained faith. Fear your Lord and speak a straightforward word. Straight to the point and always the truth. Yuslih lakum a'malakum. That perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repair what you've messed up. Wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. And forgive you your sins. Wa man yuta'i allaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azima. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, have achieved the greatest success that you could ever achieve in this life. Inna asdaq al-hadith, kitabullah. The best speech and the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best of guidance is that of our dear and beloved leader and teacher and prophet and messenger, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. There is no better guidance than his. There is no better way to conduct yourself as a human being, as a citizen, as a servant of Allah, as a father of a family, as a son, as a brother to another brother, even sisters, even women, there is no better way to conduct yourself as a person than the way of the Prophet Muhammad And and the worst thing that we could possibly do, brothers and sisters, is to attempt to introduce something new into the religion of Islam because it's already perfect. And every time someone attempts that, it's a religious innovation. And every religious innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance leads to nowhere except the hellfire. وبعد, as to what follows. جاء قوم إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقالوا له يا رسول الله نحب الله There was a group of people that came to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم And when they came to him they said, O oh, messenger of Allah we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they said, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted and sublime, he sent down a verse. A verse in the Quran that for many is extremely difficult. The ulama of tafsir, such as Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he mentioned about this verse, or he called this verse, Ayatul Imtihan. Ayatul Mihna. The testing verse. The trying verse. The verse that will be an exam for many people. And so when these people, when they claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sent down a verse, this trying and testing verse, to not only test these people who were making that claim in front of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but anyone else who would come after them, anyone else who would come after them and make that same claim, that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse is in Ali Imran, or Surah Ali Imran, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell those people, to tell those people, say to them, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if what you claim on your tongue is true, if your claim is sincere and real, 100%, fattabi'uni. Then follow the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala will love you, and even more so, more than just His love, and He will forgive you your sins. But this verse, ayyuha al-ikhwa wal-akhawat, my beloved brothers and sisters, I said the Hassan al-Basri and the ulama of tafsir, they call this verse the what? The testing verse, the trying verse. That Allah subhan that people make the claim that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as some of the Salaf have mentioned in regards to love and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, Laysa shatan an tuhib walakinna shatan an tuhab. The real issue here in that relationship is not that you love. That's not the real issue. The real issue between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real fact of the matter, the most important thing, is does he love you? This is what is more important. Laysa shatan an tuhib. Because all of us, I guarantee you, the young of you and the old of you, the rich, the not so affluent, doesn't matter what your status is, but every single person in this room, if I said, do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would say, of course. If I say, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sister, do you love Allah? Brother, do you love Allah? Even if I ask the small children, of course, we tell them, nulaqinuhum. We would tell them, you say, of course we love Allah. You might even say, how, dare, how can you ask me that? Astaghfirullah. Of course I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. Do I love Allah? Of course. But it's very easy. It rolls off the tongue so easy. I love Allah. It's just three words. It's so easy to say. But that's why the ulama, they call this verse the testing verse. Because there are indications, signs, that show that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more importantly, there are indications and signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. So bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, this is what I want to share today. What are the signs and indications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual? Loves someone. And how can we try to gain that love and earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But before I go on, I have to make a disclaimer. It is something very important. These two things that I'm telling you, they are questions for you to think about. But wallahi, ayyu al-ikhwa, no one can definitively answer them for you. I cannot tell you, point to you and say, brother, Allah loves you. I can't do that. I cannot say, brother, sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. So and so, Allah loves you. 
I can't do that. As a matter of fact, no one on planet Earth can do that. Because the only one who could do that was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he has passed away. So no one can tell you, but we can tell you the signs, can tell you the indications, can tell you what can earn you the pleasure and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you think for yourself, you answer for yourself, where am I? Where do I place? Do I do the, are those signs in my life? And you think for yourself. And then those things that I tell, the, the, the things that we can do to earn the love of Allah, you ask yourself, am I doing those things? And then you think for yourself. So the first thing and the most important sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual is that he follows the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one of the most important indications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual. Because in the ayah that I just mentioned to you, what? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Say, O oh Messenger of Allah, say to the people, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you really love Allah, fattabi'uni, follow me, yani the sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, and what? Yuhbibkumullah, then Allah will love you. So the first indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first sign that Allah loves someone is that he is upon the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Because when it comes to the sunnah, when it comes to the way and the legacy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you have different responses from Muslims. There are different reactions from Muslims. If we come to a matter or an issue and we see brother, the, what is happening here, this is a bid'ah, this is an innovation. Let us look to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Some people that say, ah, oh, but my culture, this is my culture. And some people, their response, their reaction, they will say, oh, this is what my father and mother used to do. This is what our people do. Some people, they will say, this is what we do back home in our country. Some people will say, this is what my sheikh, my sheikh, this is what he does. It's okay. You say, no, no. Brother, you take his hand and you say, let us go to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi say? Even... Another important point about this, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu it is an indication that you are even a believer at all to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu let alone the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If you don't follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu there is something wrong with your iman. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ Allah, He's swearing by Himself. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, He only swears by things that are extremely important. And la adna shak, Allah swearing by Himself, that's something important. And anything that He says after that is important. So that means when Allah swears by something, whatever He says afterwards, you should pay attention closely, listen closely. Fala wa rabbika la yu'minuna. They don't truly believe. They're phony. It's a false claim. They're not real believers. لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم until they make you a judge in what any matter that they've differed in. So you see how important it is that you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, He even denies that you are a believer if you don't follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So that when we have an issue or a problem and some of us we came from Somalia and some of us we came from Ethiopia and some of us were African American and some of us were Asian, and some of us are Arab, and we say, no brother, this is according to my culture, or no brother, this is according to the way that I came. But in these walls, brothers and sisters, in the masjid, when you're dealing with other Muslims, and even outside, when it comes to us, when we differ, I didn't say when you differ with your manager, I didn't say when you differ with your boss at work, I didn't say with the instructor at the college, between the believers, when we differ, لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينه until we make the Prophet ﷺ a judge between all of us. But pay attention, ayyuh al When you do that, you gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And He will forgive you your sins. Not only that. Who here, we don't need our sins forgiven. 
Every last person in this room, I don't care who you are, I don't care what kind of clothes you're wearing, I don't care how big your beard is. Who here doesn't have sins? Let him cast the first stone. We all have. We all have sins. But when we follow the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala loves you. Don't you want forgiveness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala? I want the forgiveness of Allah. And I'm sure all of you, you want it. And if you do, if you are truly a believer, if you really want the love of Allah and His forgiveness, ittiba'a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to follow the Sunnah. When we come together, when we line up in the masjid, when we line up for the salah, who's going to be the khatib? How should we run the masjid? If we have a conference, when we want to get married, when we do our business, any interaction that we have as Muslims, we have to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the first indication. The second indication is dhil lil mu'mineen, that we have humility and we have forbearance and forgiveness for the believers in the way that we interact with each other, in the way that we deal with each other. It's with gentleness, with forbearance, with kindness, and with humility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ عَنْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهِ بِقَوْمٍ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ He says, O oh, you who believe, any of you, if any of you, if you ever turn your back on this religion, مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ عَنْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ Whoever turns his back on this religion, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't worry, He will bring another people. Yuhibbuhum, and they love Him. Wa yuhibbuna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them, and they love Him. But He describes characteristics that they have. Those people that He loves them, and they love Him, Allah describes them with characteristics. He says, أَذِلَّتِنَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَعِزَّتِنَ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَةَ لَائِمٍ He said what? أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They are easy, they're gentle with each other when they deal with each other. They're kind with each other. They have patience with each other when they deal with their Muslim brothers. When you have a small little problem in the parking lot, you don't see them arguing with each other and yelling at each other. They're easy and gentle. Allah يُسَامِح No problem, brother. Allah forgive you, no problem. Allah mustaan. It was a small mistake. Forgive you. When they're dealing with each other in business, they're not trying to get over one another. They say, we'll give you, inshallah, I'll give you good price. I'll be fair with you. I will be just with you. And they're respectful. They're kind in their words. Whether they look the same, whether they have the same color or they don't. Whether they're from the same tribe or they're not. They have that love and that easiness and that gentleness and that forbearance and that kindness is not just reserved for my people who look like me. للمؤمنين, for all of the believers. Love this brother the same way you love that brother, the same way you love that brother, the same way you are easy with all of them, not just some of them. And then not only that, وَعَزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And we, we show dignity and we show strength when we are with the, with the disbelievers or the non-believers. I didn't say you are unfair to them. I didn't say you hurt them. I didn't say you go out of your way to bother them. But you show dignity and strength. أَعِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Unfortunately, we have in our community sometimes Brothers and sisters, mashallah, they're like lions when they're with the believers, when they're with the Muslims. They're harsh and hard against them. They show no mercy. They make no excuses. But when they're with the kuffar at work and at school, or they're, mashallah, of course, whatever you say, Bob, sure, it will help you. Okay, no, whatever you say, I have to come in for extra hours. Okay, no problem. They're easy and nice with them and gentle with them and do extra for them. But when they're with the Muslims, there's no mercy for them. There is no rahmah. But Allah, if you want the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's supposed to be the opposite. That we are kind and gentle with, the other, with each other. We are easy with each other. 
and we have forbearance with each other. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. You will see a mistake from your brother, but you forgive him. And like I said, and you have dignity when it comes to the disbelievers. You, show, you don't be shy if your boss says, and you say, yeah, it's time for Friday, and you say, I have to go to work. You don't say, oh, excuse me, I'm not sure. Is it really possible? Maybe, is it, could I please go to Friday? No, you tell them, look, I have to go for Juma. I got to go pray Friday, and that's that. And if I don't, if, we got a pro if there's a problem with that, I'm sorry, then I can't, I can't be here. And when it's time to go pray, you don't hide in, you know, in a corner somewhere where, you know, it's, and it's dirty and dusty or whatever because you don't want nobody to see you. Or when you're making wudu in the bathroom and you're shy and you're, is somebody going to come and see me? I don't want the manager to see my foot in the sink. Or, no, no, no. We're proud of our deen. We don't have to hide our religion. I didn't say you have to be disrespectful to people. Please don't get it misconstrued. I didn't say you have to harm them. You be fair and you be just with everybody. But you don't have to be shy about your deen. Even for our children. Wallahi, even our children have this impact that some of us, we're gentle with the disbelievers. Some of us in the schools for our children, we are afraid to defend for them. When it's Halloween, when it's Christmas, you don't see parents going and say, my son is not going to do this. Or my daughter's not going to, we don't do that. We don't participate in that. They say, Wallahi, they're in a public school and it's going to cause problems and and you would just leave it alone. And then your kids get corrupted by all of those different things that are happening in the school. But you should be proud and you should go and talk to them and tell them, no, 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 my kids don't participate in this. We don't do this. This is my Islam. This is my religion. And we're proud of our religion. And they fight. And they struggle and they strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In any possible way that they can. They struggle and strive against themselves and their shahwa and their desires. And if they're afraid of something, they struggle against that. And they struggle against the shaitan if need be. And they struggle against the enemies of Islam if need be. With their wealth. By calling to Islam and making da'wah. وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَ تَلَائِمْ and they, are, they don't feel, they're not worried about any blameworthiness from anybody. Like I said, they're proud and they have dignity in their religion. They do what they need to do and they're not worried about naysayers or haters or anybody who wants to say otherwise about their religion. And so another indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a slave is al-qiyamu bin nawafil. Is that they are involved and engaged in numerous Extra acts of worship. Yani an nawafil. Allah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mentioned that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned in a Hadith Qudsi, "Man adali waliyan, faqad aadantuhu bil harb." That whoever harms a wali of mine, then I have declared war on him. Allah said He's declared war on those people. مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا افْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say that there is nothing that you can come more closer to Allah than, than those things that He's made obligatory on you. There is no salat better than fajr. Dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha. This is the best salat that you can do. Siyam Ramadan, ma fi siyam afdal min hadha. There is no better siyam than siyam Ramadan. Not if you did Mondays and Thursdays for 1,000 years, you're fasting every Monday. There's nothing, one Ramadan is better than all of them. One Salat al-Fajr is better than you praying 500,000 Qiyam al-Layl sahajr. If you pray one Fajr, this is better. Because why? Yani awjab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayna hadha. That Allah, He made that obligatory on us. So that is the best thing that you could possibly do. That He doesn't come closer to me, but more so by those things than that I have made obligatory on Him. They are the best things. But then what? He said, and then my slave keeps coming closer to me, and he keeps coming closer to me after the fara'it. After Fajr, Duhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, after those things, he keeps coming closer and closer to me. How? Bin Nawafil. That you pray, huh? Before Duhr, 
you pray four sunnah. After Duhr, you pray two sunnah. Before Fajr, you pray two sunnah. Think about like when you're in school. When you're in school, and some of you uh, are maybe still in school right now, you have your homework, right? You have your homework that you have to do in class. And when you do it, yeah, you got some. And when you do it, sometimes you may not get 100%. Sometimes you might get 85. Sometimes you might get 90. Sometimes you might get 75. So what do you do to fill in that gap? You do extra credit. You do extra work. You ask your teacher, can I do an extra assignment? Can I do an extra project to fill in what I came short in? And in a similar fashion, that's what we have nawafid for. Maybe you forgot when you were in your salat, you lost your focus. Maybe instead of praying exactly on time, you came a little bit late. Yani it's not the shway. It's, a little, it's 75% instead of 100% ibadah. You are short a little bit. So you do extra. And when you do that extra, you get closer to Allah. And you get closer to Him until He said, Hatta uhibbu. He said, until I love Him. When He keeps doing those extra nawafil, Fasting Mondays and Thursdays, fasting Ayam al which is the 14th, uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Tayyam, praying to Hajjud, making sure that you get up for the Sunnah for, before Fajr. These extra things, they get you closer to Allah until He loves you. So these are one of the indications. If you are engaged in this, this is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say what I say first and foremost for myself and then for all of you, and I beg Allah سبحانه وتعالى's forgiveness and I exhort all of you to do the same because indeed He's the most forgiving and the especially merciful. الحمد لله وحده وكفى وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد. All praise and thanks is due to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and this should suffice any man. We ask Him to send His peace and blessings upon our dear and beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the last day. As to what follows, so we already gave some indications or some signs that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves an individual. We said that following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is an indication that Allah loves you if you are someone who is already doing this. This is an indication and a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Another indication is your character and your dealings with other believers. That you, are, you have humility with them and you have no kibr, no arrogance when you deal with them. That you are easy with them and, easy and gentle with them and have forbearance. That you make excuses for, the, for them and you forgive them. And thirdly, that you are engaged in nawafil. Those extra acts of worship to get, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have just a few more indications of the signs of Allah, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual. And from them are... حب التزاور والتباذل والتناسح في الله. And this is one that we direly, direly need to reinstitute amongst us in our community. Is love of visiting one another. Visiting one another. Giving each other advice. Giving each other good advice. Not just to the good, but even advising when someone is doing wrong. And to <clears throat> strive and struggle with ourselves to accomplish good. Allah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, حَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيهِ وَحَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيهِ وَحَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيهِ وَحَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَوَاصِلِينَ فِيهِ the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said حَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي that my love has been made obligatory لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيهِ for those 
who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you love your Muslim brothers and sisters, not because of some benefit they give you, not because of some money they might have for you, or some business transaction that if I cozy up to this brother, maybe he'll help me out with some business, or not because we're from the same tribe, and not because we're from the same people, or not because we look, no other reason except for the, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do that, when you have that characteristic that you love other believers, because they say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But it's, he said, Haqqat mahabbati. Khalas. It is, it is set in stone that I love this person if they do this. Haqqat mahabbati lil mutazawirina fi. And those of, who visit each other. Not because they visit somebody because he owes him a little bit of money and he needs to get paid back. Or not because he wants something from him, but simply because for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't see the brother in the masjid for a few days. We just want to go and check how he's doing. He lives close by and we just want to see, is everything okay with him? We just went to visit the brother and stopped by and we didn't have any business with him. We didn't have anything that we needed from him. We just wanted to visit you to see his face. Yeah, I need the face of someone who is a believer. Someone who says, la ilaha illallah. Someone who believes in tawheed. We just wanted to see him, that's all. Or we wanted to see her, that's all. Those people who do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His love for them is, is concrete, is set in stone. And not only that, those who they strive and struggle to accomplish good. And if you notice, every time He says, that they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you give charity, that you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you help someone, that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you visit someone, that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, that it's, of course, if we go back to the first one, that it's on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And when you do that, you will gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're what? You love others. Because Muslims, we're supposed to be a caring people. We're supposed to care about what's happening to those brothers and sisters who are in Syria. We're supposed to love them. And we should be hurting when we feel, when we hear what's happening to them. And what's happening to the Muslims in Ethiopia? We should love them. And we should feel bad when we hear about things that are happening to them. And the Muslims that are in Somalia, we should love them. And we should feel bad when we hear about the things that are happening to them. And all of the Muslims all over the Muslim world, in Nigeria, and in Gambia, and in Burma, and in all of these places. Why? Why do we love them? Because they, maybe some of them have light skin? Or some of them were from the same continent? No, because they say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That's why we love them. And we care about them. And then when you do that, when you care about people like that, when you are concerned about people like that, of course you're going to try to do more. Whether it's make dua for them, or to help them, or to be concerned about them, to inform others about them, but you would do something. al fi That they do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't just talk. If they can, they make dua. If they can give money, they give money. If they can help in any way, they help. But at the end, the most important thing is that they love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. Another one is, another indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual. Is al-ibtila' bil masaib wal-imtihan. To be tried with difficulties. To have trials and tribulations. Some people in, in the, in the, amongst the Muslims, they think the opposite. Because I have money, because I have health, because I have a lot of things, this means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me. And not only does he love me now, because I have these things now, he will love me in the hereafter too. Alhamdulillah. And this is incorrect. Having money and having wealth is not an indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the dunya. He gives money to the believers, to the Muslims, and he gives to the non-believers as well. This is not a sign and an indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's loves. A sign and indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's something that, because the, as, he, as I said, he gives that to the believers and the disbelievers. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for someone, he gives them deen. That's the real indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good and he loves someone. 
in Bukhari, Man yurid Allah bihi khayran yufaqihuhu fi al-deen. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for someone, He gives him understanding of the religion. He didn't say He gives him a lot of money, He gives him a lot of health, He gives him a lot of this or that, a lot of children. No, 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 no. We see that there's no difference between us and the kuffar in this regard. They have money, we have money. They have, what, they have things, they, we have things. They have children, we have children. There's no difference in that. But a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual is that he tries and he tests them. كما يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن عظم الجزاء من عظم البلاء That the greater the trial and the tribulation that an individual goes through or suffers through if they stand through and they have patience and they have forbearance through that trial, the greater the reward they will see, receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tries and tests those who he loves. As it was mentioned in another hadith, when he was asked, who are tried the most? Al-Anbiya. Al-Anbiya. The prophets. And we all agree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the prophets, yes? Do we all agree on this? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the prophets. And they are the most tried and tested. ثُمَّ الصَّالِحُونَ And then those who are righteous. And the righteous, what are they doing except trying to be like the prophets? They are following in the footsteps of the prophets. And if they are following the footsteps of the prophets, and Allah loves the prophets, and since He loves them, He tests them, those who are following in their footsteps, naturally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will try and test them. And then those who are like them and those who are like them. And this is something that we have to understand. That it is, how is it an indication? Even there is something that shows us in this life that it is an indication that Allah loves us. How? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can either try us and test us here in this life. Or He can try us in the hereafter. If someone has no trials and no tests. The ulama, they say this person, you should be afraid for him, and this person is munafiq, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only reserving the trials and the tests, all of them. For someone who has no tests, he is reserving it for them in the hereafter. And we don't want to be tried and tested then. It is easier for us now to deal with those things now, rather than to deal with them in the hereafter. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعُقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِذَا أَرَادُوا بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرِّ أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ حَتَّى يُوَافِيهِ بِهِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for someone, for his servant, then he will race and have, hurry to have the punishment in this life. So when you have sicknesses or difficulties or loss of wealth, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's either because of our sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is erasing your sins for you so that you don't have to deal with it in the hereafter. But it says what? If either arad Allah bi abdihi shar, but if Allah wants evil for someone, amsaka anhu, then he holds it back. Bi dhambihi hatta yuafihi bihi yawm al qiyamah until he meets them on yawm al qiyamah then he will bring all of the punishment and all of the trials and all of the tests and the ulama they say this is only for the munafiq this is only for the hypocrite that Allah does this that he doesn't give them any trials in this life so this is another indication and lastly an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves an individual and not only that, but what we get out of it. What do we get? What do we gain from having the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In a hadith that I already mentioned to you, this hadith Qudsi, Man adali waliyan faqad adhantuhu bil harb. This is a long hadith, hadith Qudsi. But in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Man adali waliyan faqad adhantuhu bil harb. Wa ma taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shay'in ahabba ilay, ahabbu ilay, mimma aftaradtuhu alay. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبُّهُ فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْسِرُ بِهِ وَيَدُهُ الَّتِي يُبْدِشُ بِهِ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِ بِهَا وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ وَلَإِنْ اسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ 
وما ترددت عن شيء أنا فاعله ترددي عن نفس المؤمن يكره الموت وأنا أكره مساءته In this hadith, this long hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, anyone who harms someone who is my wali, and by the wali, don't think that it's someone who is flying in the air or making one million dhikr in the middle of the night or something like this. This is not a wali. The wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is someone who fears Allah, who fulfills his commands, and stays away from his prohibitions. This is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who fulfills his command, who fears Allah, fulfills his commands, and stay away from his prohibitions. That means anyone here can be a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone here can be a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he said, whoever harms my wali, فَقَدْ آذَنْتُ بِالْحَرْبِ And I've declared war on that person. And my slave, he doesn't, and my servant, he, does, he, keeps, he doesn't come closer to me by those, except by those things that I've made obligatory on him, those things that he has to do. But he continues and continues to get closer and closer to me with those nawafil, those extra things, until I love him. And once this happens, once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him, then Allah is his hearing that he hears with, and his sight that he sees with, and his hand that he grips with, and his feet that he walks with. If they were to ask, Allah would give them. If they were to seek my protection, then Allah would protect them. And Allah never hesitates. Allah never hesitates the way that he hesitates to take the soul of a believer. They hate death, and Allah hates to harm the believers. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This, this one hadith should be enough for all of us that we should be concerned about how, what are the signs that Allah loves us, how can we gain the love of Allah, and what we get. This should be enough for us that we want to be busy with trying to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you do, brothers and sisters, Allah will be your hearing for you that you hear with. And what does that mean? I have to clarify. It does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joins inside of you and now he's hearing for you. It doesn't mean that. But the fact that he gave you your hearing, you will only use it in things that will please him. And you will only use your sight in a manner that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will only use your hands to do things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will only use your feet to take you to good places. And when you do this, when this is how you are, this is what your day is like, whatever you ask, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And whenever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, he will give you. And whenever you seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will protect you. So much so that he loves you so much so and he's so gentle with you and cares about you so much that even when you're dying, Allah hesitates to take your soul because he doesn't want to harm you. That's how much he loves you. If you what? If you do those things that we mentioned in this khutbah. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, that we give us deeds that will earn his love and his pleasure. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who love each other for his sake. And that we love the believers and then that we love those who love the believers, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the truth for what it is, and to give us the strength, the courage, and the sincerity to follow it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us falsehood for what it is, and to give us the strength, the courage, and the sincerity to stay away from it. And wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'een, wa ala sahabati ajma'een, wa ala abi bakr wa umar wa uthman wa ali, wa ala sahabati ajma'een, wa ma'ahum, wa وما ونحن معهم بكرمك وإحسانك يا أكرم الأكرمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وانقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب إباد الله اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة